<laughs> I thought it was a good story. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Hey, uh, Jesse. What, yeah. What do you, you want to make? Do you want to? Do you want to talk about the thing? Where's my apples? Your apples. Where's my apple? You promised oh, apples. I Where the out. hell are my damn apples? Okay, I'll get you your apple. And how do you like them? I completely forgot. I like them raw. <laughs> They're made of air. Well, hey, well, oh, apples. Apples, yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Oh, Maddie oh, wants to chime Maddie in. Wants to chime in, Maddie. In. Oh. I'm sorry, Adam, but he also forgot the buns he texted us last night. Yeah. Where? So Natalie Natalie was going to make buns for the office, but then she didn't get up early enough to bake them today. So you guys don't get your buns either. You're going to get buns and apples on Friday. Buns and apples. Can we talk about the announcement, though? Oh, we'll, we'll get to the apples no, thing later. No, 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 no. No, no, We'll get to the apples thing later. We have a big announcement. There's something going yeah, the on. Announcement no, 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 no. We're, we're not announcing it. Wrong. We're not announcing it. No, it Jesse needs to be available were... for us to launch it. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. What, so here's what happened with the apples. We're, we're Apple. Like, we're talking about apples. We're Apple. Right. We don't launch something unless it's, like, ready to go. Right. You know? Yeah. So, okay, are we going to have a bunch of this? Are we going to have a bunch of people lining up outside for this announcement? <laughs> no. Ah, uh, it's too bad. <laughs> That's too bad. I remember uh, back in the day uh, when Jesse and I were working on uh, Kiss together, we had an intern and his name was Tyler. And Tyler would go to the Apple suits. Store launches. Suits. We called him Suits because he showed up in a suit. Yeah. And he would ask he would ask people in line when the last time they got laid was. <laughs> what the fuck? He would do streeters. You know, like the TikTok kids now, they're all doing streeters. But that started from radio. Give us credit, us old yeah. radio folks. Yeah. Uh, he would do his radio streeters in the Apple line. He would be so insulting to these people. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was bad. <laughs> it was, well, yeah. The, the complaint was that it was caustic from management. But I got to tell you, man, like the listeners love yeah. it. We did crazy shit on that show. Yeah. Like crazy shit. Um, hey, so, okay. The apples. I'll bring the apples on. Friday. Mm -hmm. Do you have so a press mad. preference? Is it golden delicious? Is it honey crisp? Is it uh, I want a variety? I want a spread of apples. Oh, you want a cornucopia? Like a like a charcuterie board of apples. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. What Steve, do you have a preference of an apple that you like? In my mouth and in my possession for being correct about the oilers. Finally, when they scored that goal in the first, I'm like, those fucking apples are mine. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like somebody to clip Adam saying, do you have a preference? And then Steve saying in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, also, we I would know that earlier you. said raw. <laughs> raw we should note mouth. that Maddie is allergic to apples. So is Maddie allergic to apples? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Oh, right. It was apples. And what else? You have a weird you have a weird one. Yeah, that's uh, cherries. So, OK, let me tell you an all star story. So we were we were and this is about Maddie. Uh, we were at uh, the Pepsi thing. Right. We were at the Pepsi activation. activation yeah. Uh, Pepsi, Pepsi puck stop. And, uh, Maddie and I had been there for like three, four hours and she is editing up a storm and the internet's terrible because there's so many LTE things in there. We got to get it like a rocket hub or something like that. And, um, I'm like, Maddie, you hungry? She's like, I'm starving. And she'd already gone next door to the Cheetos activation. Hell got yeah. Got some Shout Cheetos. To the Cheetos stand. But they're, Shout they're not filling and I don't like Cheetos. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me, let me see something else at that time. I don't like Cheetos because they're just, it's my weird thing. I don't know why. You're wrong. I know. You're wrong. So at that time, though, they were doing the NHL player red carpet. And it cut all the way through the center of the Metro Toronto Convention Center. So you're hearing it's like, and welcome, Sam Reinhardt. And then it's like, woo! And then Connor McDavid, woo! Mm -hmm. And the biggest, who do you think got the biggest cheer? Uh, Carlton the Bear. No. Who? William Nylander. Really? I think his cheer was bigger than Matthew's. Well, Adam, remember when people didn't like him? I know. And I had a theory about why people didn't like him. Mm -hmm. What was my theory? He was pretty. It's because he's hot. Yeah, he's hot. And now here he is. Being hot. Being hot. It's being at ready. the All-Star Game. Hot at the All-Star Game. William Nylander getting the biggest cheer. I'm not shocked. So I go down to uh, the Skip the Dishes activation. Mm. And I'm like, hey, guys, do you have pizza here? Because they do have pizza. And, and is there pizza... Uh, a, a normal pizza with, you know, uh, sauce and cheese and stuff. Well, it's got like cheese and vegetables and stuff on it. But the base, instead of uh, tomato sauce, was applesauce. What? Uh, yeah. Why? And I was like, well, shit, man, I can't eat that either. And we were locked in. There was no way we were moving up this carpet. So, like, I tried it. It actually didn't taste bad. But I'm like, why can't we just have normal pizza, man? They didn't have a normal option? No. Like, you can't it was give the one. It was the one option. 
That's it was ridiculous. one with meat and one without. It was That's like a Caesar. Insane. It was like a Caesar salad apple thing. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, why? Why? <laughs> why didn't we just get get a bunch of pepperoni pizzas, man? It's not that hard. But yeah. So anyway, poor Maddie. Could not eat the pizza. Were there just apple pizza. you were like more upset for me than I was? Well, because you were working so hard. <laughs> she was working so hard. Were there were there just a bunch of no nos outside protesting in dress pants and should have been and uh, undershirts? There should have been. <laughs> Going ah! yeah, giant sign throwing tomatoes. Should have been and then picking them up because you know they spent a lot of time growing. That's them. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's a that's a random story from All Star Game. So we do have an announcement coming that we can't talk about. The Edmonton Oilers did win Steve and Jesse a bunch of healthy, delicious apples by losing Game Seventeen mm -hmm. of a sixteen win, one loss, seventeen game run, and it did start well. It did start well. I shorthanded two on O. I felt really good about that. I was like, oh man, I made the right call. Damn. I where where do you think that ranks? Like worst moment of a goalie's life. Having Connor <laughs> McDavid and Leon Dreisidel shorthanded? Yeah. Terrible. On a breakaway. Two on O breakaway. Mm -hmm. That's well, gotta be a bottom one breakaway in the league. I don't know. Cause here first off, it was in the first period. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's recoverable. Mm -hmm. right second is everybody expects it to go in so if you make a save oh my god including you right yeah including it you have to be you could be like all right my chances aren't great here but i'm gonna try I, so if you're aiden hill and you make that save have you not just almost like you've just swung momentum completely in your team's favor 100 percent, 100 i feel like most goalies panic and they go oh no 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 and a goalie with poise just sort of goes well <laughs> i will or i won't We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I'm going to try. Uh, I like but, the way that we're setting this up. It makes it sound like he stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> and then no, <laughs> it didn't. He did no, not. He did not. Uh, no. The Seaweed Man got the uh, secondary assist on that, by the way. Seaweed Man was going for a goal last night. He was going for it. He had a six, his sixth assist of the year. Seaweed Man. Vinny Deharnay. Um, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Roy and Alex Petrangelo. Wah. Wah. I know. Nick I Wah. I, Nick Wah. Uh, scored from the point with a couple minutes to go, and then no scoring in the second. Chandler Stevenson opens it up in the first couple minutes of the third, and then, of course, you got the William Carlson empty netter at the end of the game. But, man, it really did feel like up until the end. Like, it was a great... That was a great game. It was game of the year. Easily, I think, is that's game of the year. One thing they kept emphasizing on the broadcast was that it felt like a playoff game, and it really did because of how tight it was and how close it was. And Edmonton should be very happy with how they played. Like, they were right in the whole thing. And if they get a couple more chances, you know, uh, if they get a couple more bounces that go their way, they can probably win that game. Like, they had to make McDavid hit the crossbar. He was mm -hmm. right over Aiden Hill's shoulder and all that. But, like, my biggest takeaway from the game is that if you were making Team Canada's roster today, if you don't have Aiden Hill as a starting goaltender, you're disrespecting the entire national. Man, offense. is he good. He's the best. He's, he's the, really he's the best in the league, and no one talks about him. Like he's got a 938 right now. He just won the Stanley Cup. It's it's a little weird because he didn't go into anything last year as the starter. You know, Logan Thompson was there. No, he was like and the fourth goalie. <laughs> I keep emphasizing yeah. that. He lost his job and then lost his job to another guy. He lost his job. It was like pure luck. Mm -hmm. He ended up in that position. And then he earned a five million dollar contract and a Stanley Cup ring but out of it. Today. On this day, if you're taking the best goaltender in the world for Team Canada, or just even in all of hockey right now, it's probably Aiden Hill. Yeah, you got two years left, but if the Olympics were today, I can't really think of who else you would rather. Mm -hmm. And that Canada, that uh, the game winning goal. It's a shame because if you if you're watching the game, like Drysaitel blows a tire at. Uh, center ice before everything happens and then Paul Cotter goes in he tries to go through his legs and around the back but like if Dreisaito doesn't blow a tire going to the bench or he might have been tripped the the bench kind of like reacted like he got tripped but I think he just tripped on himself uh, like maybe it's 1-1 and they go to OT or something you know it's just a bounce that doesn't go Edmonton's way which through the 16 game winning streak bounces go your way the whole time right you know what we didn't grow up with is the hey! we didn't grow up with that because microphones didn't pick up every bench going ah! at, at everything, mm -hmm. everything. It's a, it's a, 
It makes it sound like they're complaining more these days, but it's just, I'm sure they screamed heinous shit. It's just, we couldn't hear it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure in the 60s, they also complained. They have cleaned the, they have cleaned <laughs> the language up. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. Significantly. Just a, just a tad. <laughs> Significantly. Just yeah, a tad. Um, yes, yeah, but the Oilers, listen, full props to them. That's a that's an amazing run. My question now, because they've had an eight-game winning streak and now a 16-game winning streak, mm-hmm. what next? Ah, oh, they just continue to play well. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't how it's meant to be. Like, I almost wonder if there's a small, I mean, there's no situation where the Oilers wanted to lose to Vi- at all, especially Vegas. Yep. But instead of just keeping the streak alive, you know what I mean? You can just focus on what you need to do going forward. That's all you got to do is focus on how you become a better team. They played a good game against Vegas. There's area for improvement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. Uh, didn't seem like an unbeatable juggernaut last night. There were moments where Vegas got into the Oilers zone. Oilers try to clear it. Vegas just goes, no, no, we're staying here. Oilers try it again. No, no, we're staying here. And they would just be able to get three or four scoring chances. Mark Stone is a thief. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the takeaways, what do you think they were? Uh, takeaway. So I know shot attempts, Oilers killed them. Takeaways, get, give it to me. 12 to 2. In, in Vegas's favor. I and ten most of, of that's them Mark, Mark Stone. Stone. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he it's funny. We were just talking about the Olympics. I keep seeing rosters with Mark Stone on it, and I go, nah, there's higher scoring players than him. It's, dude, dude, you need a player like that. He's amazing. Win. They're the He's most incredible. They're the most disrespected Stanley Cup champion ever. Like they, they come into this year and they're still unbelievably underrated. Jack Eichel is out and Nick Waugh has just stepped in and been their number one setter and has looked phenomenal. He looked great last night. And every single time the Vegas Golden Knights go out, everybody is like, okay, you know, this team is going to beat them because they have no one. They have all these injuries. And then they have everybody step up and they play a smothering type of hockey and they win. Mm hmm. Like it's gonna, it's every single time any team comes up against them in the playoffs. As long as they're playing like this, they're gonna be so hard, nearly impo- impossible to beat. You're Jason Kelsey when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. They said Jack Eichel couldn't win a cup. <laughs> they said Bill Foley couldn't do it with a ten million dollar player. They said Aiden Hill couldn't be a starter. They said Alex Petrangelo <laughs> couldn't do it again. Yeah, man. No, they're they're very clearly a team that can get it done in the regular season, but are built for the playoffs. Yeah, and every time everybody talks about the top teams, they default to Edmonton and Colorado, and people go Carolina, and they say, oh, Winnipeg's playing great, Vancouver's having a great season, and Vegas just goes under the radar doing their thing and winning cups. Well, no one, winning a cup. No one wants to default to what they saw last year's playoffs. They want to go with what's in front of them. Um, like, the regular season very obviously matters, um, if you don't make the playoffs, you don't have a chance mm-hmm. um, to win the Stanley Cup. But I mean, there's Vegas and still Florida have done well enough this regular season that you could very reasonably uh, say both those teams are going to end up in the Stanley Cup final again. And no one should even raise their eyebrows at you. Yeah, Florida, especially. Like they've they've had a great little run here as well. Mm-hmm. You know? All right, we're gonna beat the shit out of everyone. One, two, three, break, and then they yeah. go and do no, that. it wouldn't be one, two, three, break. It's can't suspend us all, break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do with every team's orbital bones, break? <laughs> like, uh, they're just going out there and wrecking shop. Now, there's things I want to talk about when it comes to Lindholm's debut in Vancouver, Kuzmenko's debut in Calgary. Um, there's there's a few things. Uh, obviously, Monahan made his debut in Winnipeg as well. But the thing I want to talk about most is something that was just tweeted at 1120 this morning, which as of this recording is 25 minutes old. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's from NHL Public Relations, PR underscore NHL. Are you ready? Sure. As part of the ongoing effort to provide the most accurate statistical accounting possible of NHL games, the league has performed a comprehensive audit. Okay. Of. Okay. The. Blank statistic. What statistic? Assist? Jesse? Uh, what stat is... In, uh, shots? 
As part of the ongoing effort to provide the most accurate statistical accounting possible of NHL games, the league has performed a comprehensive audit of the hits statistic hits. Okay. in every game this season and made appropriate adjustments. The newly updated season totals are reflected on NHL.com and the league's statistical releases as of today. I'm scared. Oh, How does this affect fantasy? Well, no. this is what I'm saying. There are there That's are, actually a really good point. There yeah. are bets made on this. There are you know, there are fantasy teams. I don't, I don't I don't think you, I, you can't bet on it. You hits. can't bet on no. hits? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, what about fantasy? Can't you do that? In fantasy, yeah. yes. Yeah, is yeah, that you, a part of it? Yeah, I guess. But um. So <laughs> that is... Okay, so they've made the adjustments. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is who gained and who lost. Well, I would imagine the Islanders lost. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I don't know who gained and who lost. Nobody's had the chance to look at that yet. But I just thought that's interesting. Now... It's a tough stat to track. I will give them... I will give everybody credit on that. Yes. Now, here's another opportunity. And I'm not saying they've missed the opportunity. Mm -hmm. They have not included it. But I would like them to. Mm -hmm. Do a video. Do a, do a less than five minute long video. Mm -hmm. With footage of your league that you own. Mm -hmm. Showing... A hit that is not a hit and a hit that is a hit and explain why. That's it. That's no. all you got to do. What if we just said no? What if you did that? You Because you know what they are. You just audited it. I I want that more than I want oxygen. I, I need that because I think it'd be very, very interesting and helpful. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But like a, a hit is if I'm not mistaken, technically body contact that separates a player from the puck. Yes, I believe that is. There's a lot of hits that are empty calorie hits. Yeah. So like, for example, a player finishing their hit on a guy is not a hit. Yeah. Like half a second after the puck's gone, it's just getting your pound of flesh. Yep. But it's not actually a hockey hit by statistics. That's interesting. I, I, I'm trying to think of if I've ever heard of a league announcing this. I haven't either. Well, I guess basketball, uh, I just thought will, it was, it was basketball will change the score of the game in the middle of the game. Yeah, if a guy's foot was on the three-point line. Which, that's fascinating. Like, they did that between quarters at a game I was at once, and I was like, I, they can do that? When? <laughs> since when? Um, uh, but that is odd. So, you know, you immediately said you can bet on this stuff. Yeah. Jesse immediately said, no, you can't. Well, no, Adam's not wrong in that, like, if you have money on your fantasy team or if you have some sort of thing going on there, you could bet on it. Yeah. Well, so what I'm what I'm getting at, though, is what I'm assuming is they want it to be a reliable stat. Yeah, that's what it looks like they're trending towards is fixing something that's clearly an issue. Because it varies by arena to arena, team to team, and whoever's sitting there counting the the hits is is not doing is doing a biased job. And it seems like the NHL that's that's they have they have audited that and they're trying yeah. to fix it so that it can be a, a reliable stat that you can go forward with. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I thought you'd find that interesting. I'm that not sure how far we go with it, but I and, and I'm not sure what the complications are or whatever. But like if you have a fantasy team on Yahoo Sports, do they then update your scores? Do they go back and mm -hmm. basically redo all the games that you've been in this season? I right. hope not. Do they well, undo your Cage Thompson so. trades? I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I still think I kicked ass in that trade. Carter Verhage's been great for me. <laughs> I don't even care. He got Joel, power play goal last Has time. Joe Wall played a game? Uh no. <laughs> so if I fire no, he played up, one. He played one. If I fire up BetMGM and I look at the player props that are available, it's the usual ones. It's shots, assists, points, power play points, block shots. Block shots is a very particular one, but that's more accurate, um, which is I think is fair to bet on. But yeah, there's usually not hits on the player props categories. Well, on because betting sites. If you had made bets mm -hmm. and lost. And then they change these stats around and they would have gone in your favor. Would you not be losing your mind today? Oh, yeah. And what I assume is you haven't been able to bet on these things, but they're trying to make it so that you can. Also, just like the integrity of the game. Like it doesn't, not everything has to be about betting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it should be, the stats of your league should just be correct. 
Yes. And, and this, we know they're not. This is something that the NBA is actually struggling with mightily in that there are things you can bet on that aren't accurate because assists and rebounds are a huge point of contention right now in the NBA because guys will get assists on plays that d they don't have a direct impact on the shot. Like a guy, yeah. a guy will bring up the ball. He'll pass him the ball. 10 seconds later, after a lot of dribbling, the guy takes a shot and he scores. That should not count as assist. And people are betting on this and complaining all the time on, on Twitter and online and showing the actual replays of, hey, how was this counted as assist? How was this not? And rebounds too, where guys will just get the ball and they're not directly uh, like getting the ball off of the basket. Like it shouldn't count as a rebound in the traditional sense. Or sometimes they're not counted as rebounds well, in the traditional sense. Guys just essentially passing it to themselves. Exactly. Which is disgraceful. Yeah. Like it should not count so there have like in the nba it struggles with people betting and just the reporting of stats not being accurate at all so this isn't uncommon place of stats being inaccurate to what you see with your eyes as opposed to the guy in the arena who's charting it down on a piece of paper there right was a goal i remember earlier this season it would have been in the first or third period um because the leafs bench was closest to their end mm -hmm. and there was a goal scored and there were two assists the second assist was basically like a five foot pass, like within the Leafs own blue line. And I'm like, that's a pass. That's not an assist. There should be a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you set it, you set it up, you know, uh, one end to the other in the slot for a one timer bomb. That's an assist. You simply hand me the puck before going and doing whatever you need to do. It's like, 125 feet away from where the goal is scored. That's not an assist, man. No, it's not. It's not. A lot of defensemen are mad right now. Yeah. Steve, so, that's my bread and butter. I mean, it is supporting my point that uh, it is supporting my point that that uh, uh, the only thing that matters are goals. Just throwing that out. There. Well, <laughs> that that um, is that is a big part of the reason why uh, yeah. a lot of people into analytics put a focus on primary points. Right. Mm -hmm. There are such things as valuable secondary assists, but generally speaking, the primary assist and the goal are the most important, but the most, most important is goals. It's the goal. Yes. If, you, right. if you simply type in, how is this not an assist on Twitter? All you get is a whole bunch of people clipping a bunch no of way. So like I just did that and the first thing comes up with a, a guy with a very good point about an assist in a Clemson Memphis game, NCAA basketball. It's 72 68, and a guy passes the guy the ball, and it's not recorded as an assist. So 24 has the ball. He passes it to his teammate right there. Number one, number one drives to the basket. He scores. And on this guy's betting card, he didn't get the extra assist from that uh from the guy who passed it originally because it wasn't recorded as, as an assist and so this is a problem in the nba and the nhl i guess to their credit is trying to fix it, a part of their game that also has this issue listen if, if people have questions you need to be able to answer it man you got to be able to answer it that's not an it i said looks, nba but this is ncaa but right same well, point some people might be like oh you know i'm sure there are people shaking their heads at this like oh why are you betting on that or whatever okay but you're allowed to and customers deserve an answer it's also record keeping like outside yes. of the betting, you you mentioned like even besides betting, record keeping. You should be accurate at your record well, keeping. How about this? It's college. Yeah. Dude, I'm trying to get drafted. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get a contract. I'm trying to go to the G League. I'm trying to go to the NBA. Yeah. yeah. Imagine I'm, you're you're any ex NBA player trying to set the all time record for assists. Yes. <laughs> you're getting your inaccurate. Yes. You know? Sorry. Yes. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's important. That one's not an assist. <laughs> it's important. You can't tell me like I know. NHL teams, for example, uh, go to every game in wherever town. But you can't tell me there aren't times in the sixth or seventh round where they're not like, eh, tiebreaker goes to the points or tiebreaker goes to assists. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And now you're relying on the stats guy from Swift Current. Well, and, and I like no offense, <laughs> but like that's. You know, I'm sure they're not making a lot of dough to do their gig, yep, and they're right. doing it out of the kindness of their heart. Are they not? Like, the people that track some of these stats are employed by the teams, not the NHL. So mm -hmm. how do you how do you bet on impartiality? Well, we we got a a, a view of the Kingston Frontenac's operation. Holy shit. Pretty, well, it was pretty advanced. I was, I was what, very impressed. Stuff. For what? For what? you know, uh, uh, an OHL team is supposed to operate on. I was like, okay, wow. I was very impressed. They had better equipment in their, in their booth 
just like announcing the game than I've ever had in radio ever. It was extremely impressive. Although, although the board that Jesse and I used at Virgin Radio was older than me. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so oh, if you're, you're still curious, work great at that. still work great. If right. you're curious, Cal Clutterbuck leads the NHL all time in hits. He has 3,902 hits. Matthew Martin is second up with 3,778. So these guys are in the record book for something that is uh, not too accurate. <laughs> and who do those two guys play for? Do they play on the same line? <laughs> Like, forget team. That, we play no. on the same okay. line. This is scary. I don't know, guys. This is absolutely no, terrifying. No, I think they keep accurate stats on oh, the island. Oh, Hits my on the island God. are super accurate, guys. <laughs> Ryan Reeves is eighth? Yeah. There you go. Cool. Well, that, yo, okay, I got to say, guys, like. One, two. Can they, can they relitigate the whole thing? Like, can they go back to the whole their entire careers they, is holy they probably should seven yeah. of the top <laughs> 10 are active yeah so um hits are only tracked from 1990 on oh yeah. i was like dude i've seen every player in the top 10 i have hockey cards for all of the top but, 10 yeah but pre-1990 beyond that the fact that the top two guys are on the same line like steve you always mentioned this is not new you always mentioned that the islanders tracked like crazy hit stats Dude, this was this. You know how with the Coyotes we keep going. Oh man, we were talking about this since the first episode yeah. of the show. Yeah, yeah, this as well. Yeah, this yeah, it's well. pretty early on. Pretty early on. We've been saying, oh yeah, their hit stats are completely out of whack. And now look, mm-hmm. it's over a decade later, and these two guys have the record. That's crazy. That's actually nuts. This is something that has to make it onto social media later. Because oh my god, <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> Six guys, wait, no. Yeah, six guys have reached 3,000 hits. Mm -hmm. And two of them are on the same line. Stop. Wild. Stop, everybody. The Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup is back for its eighth season. Jesse is wearing the sweater. He's excited. We are empowering Canadian money hockey teams to make a meaningful impact on their communities by doing as many good deeds as possible to fill the cup, baby. Um, so, you know, if you've got eligible good deeds, you got to record them on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or X using hashtag good deeds cup and hashtag contest. Hashtag. And remember to tag at Chevrolet Canada and hashtag your team's name. Every eligible good deed you, your family, or your community submits, submits on your behalf will be on social. And it will also count towards, um, the good deeds cup leaderboard. Now think about this. Mm. $100,000 to the charity of your team's choice and the title of Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champion. Now, hoisting that cup has to feel good. Oh my God, yeah. Well, you know, as a recent uh, champion. Um, <laughs> of I the could, Good Deeds Cup? Yeah, <laughs> not of the Good Deeds Cup. But floorball. Just, you know, champions, it, it was floorball, but like we're, we're all- uh, Game recognized game is yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, game recognized game. There's no better feeling, uh, I can tell you. Okay, all right. Well, visit ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca to hang with the champions like Steve Dangle, who's taking credit for this championship. He has not won yet. Fill the cup with Good Deeds Cup and Chevrolet Canada. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, if you're looking for something that a lot of people benefit from, obviously we've talked openly about the fact that the three of us have been to therapy many, many times, uh, BetterHelp might be for you. And the great thing about BetterHelp is it's one of those things that can be online. Well, it is online. It's either that or it's on the phone or it's or it's via text messages sometimes, kind of however you're comfortable. And if you're not vibing with the person that they match you with in less than 48 hours sometimes, then you can switch because really important, uh, just like some shows don't have chemistry, thankfully we do, uh, sometimes you and your therapist don't. And if you don't, and I've had this actual situation happen, I uh, went to therapy, didn't really bond with the therapist, didn't get anywhere, um, you can switch and find somebody that you do with. And and that, that I think, is, is really great. Uh, there's also, um, it's flexible and convenient, so it can be suited to your schedule. So it's not like a, you can only book from 10 to 4. While you're at work, it can be all over the place in terms of and that. something like therapy is especially important in the winter months because like oh. none of us get enough vitamin D and the sad hits a little quicker, you know, in the in these this time of the year. So I think it's a best time to protect yourself. I make excuses to go outside when it's like it is today. There's yeah. like a there's some sunshine in the sky, <laughs> a little bit of sun. You know what? You know, what? I'll I'll bring in the garbage. You know what? I got I got to check the mail. It's been a few days to check the mail. And you know what? Iggy needs another walk. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had a, a chat with my therapist the other day and he said maybe you need to get a sun lamp because it's been it's been gray. 
Mm. So if it's been a little well, bit like that for you, BetterHelp it might be something you want to give it a try. I was going to say, you know what else they could try? Better, better help. help. That's right. Betterhelp.com <laughs> slash tell your therapist that you're going to better help. <laughs> I told him that. <laughs> Today, you can get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Um, shall we get on to uh, Lindholm getting two goals in his debut for the Vancouver Canucks? No. Uh, no. Man, listen, if the, if the Vancouver Canucks are going to give you anything, it's... Uh, they're gonna All of their you, prospects. No, oh, sorry. Uh, well, no, it, they're going to let you go on a shooting percentage bender. And, oh, my God. And it's never falling to earth, never again. Uh, they will shoot 20% the rest of their lives. It's crazy. Who had the stat last night? I think it was Mike Kelly. They're first in rush chance goals and 32nd in rush chances. Wow. They're, you're first in a type of goal and last in that type of chance. Yeah, that's correct. O offense off the rush. Offense off the rush. Second place would be, well, the Stars are actually tied with them for first. For uh, for anybody that doesn't understand, the Stars have the eighth most amount of chances off the rush. Like, that's reasonable. Yeah. Vancouver, 32nd and first. That is unreasonable. There, like, there's a reason why people keep looking at the Canucks and they're like, all right. So they're going to turn into a pumpkin eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I refuse to say that because sometimes, I don't know, you're just the best at this. Yeah. Why but, can't you just be good and play yeah. that style of hockey? I didn't like that. That Twitter narrative that went on. They're like, oh, they're just they're shooting a high percentage and they're lucky. What if they're just good? Well, the PDO is <laughs> a little crazy. What if they play with the lead so friggin often that that's why they don't have that many chances? Yeah. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. Or Every time just, I check the, the the box score, they have the lead. Yeah, or that's the style of hockey they play. Yeah. Like, that's also a reasonable conclusion. Now, you know, this is, it's funny. This is the same conversation we had about a decade ago with Patrick Waugh's rookie coaching season with the Avalanche. Like, what if, what if this is just the way they play? And then they, the moment the playoffs arrive, they turn into a pumpkin and lost. <laughs> but um, it is very funny that a notoriously unlucky player this season makes his debut and gets two goals right away. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and Rick Tockett said his favorite types of goals are the, the tip and one that Lindholm scored and tic-tac-toe goals. Mm -hmm. So he, he and for Lindholm to get two, that's got to feel good. Cause he had one, I think in his last 15 or something, something like that. He was not good or not fortunate. I should say. Right. Right. And then, and then to double up on that, Andre Kuzmenko gets a beautiful pass from Jonathan Huberto, who Julian McKenzie and Salim Valji were both saying Huberto had his best game as a flame last night. Kuzmenko just rips it home four minutes into the game. And yeah. Kadri is almost on pace for 70 points. Like, he's he's really pulled it together. Listen, That's good. Like, the, the Canucks um, are going to judge the Lindholm trade by whether or not they do well in the playoffs, whether or not they, you know, make the Final Four, or whether or not they win a cup. Calgary Flames have an opportunity to do really well in this trade. Sure. Because I mean, Kuzmenko can finish, right? He can yes, finish. Like this and is, they need that. This is what I was thinking about. Like People were talking about all the prospects they got and all the picks. I'm like, what about Kuzmenko? Like, he could simply just be a good player for them. Mm -hmm. He could be another trade chip for them. Like, what happens if they're able to do with Kuzmenko what the flame, uh, not the flames, the... Um, Habs were able to do with Monaghan, mm -hmm. where Kuzmenko's a dump. That is a cap dump. Well, because he signed a pretty expensive deal, right? Right, five point five million dollars, right? Yeah, but it, which isn't outrageous. And if he has a good back half, then all of a sudden, last year he scored thirty nine goals. Mm -hmm. He had a bad first half, and then a good second half. The majority seventy five percent of that, he is a lethal goal scorer. Yes, yeah, so the idea is that. He's closer to the 40 goal scorer that he was last year than he is the eight goal scorer. I think he has this, well, year, you know, and if, if Calgary can get that out of him and within the next year, like they got something really nice. So here's what I would say about that. The one thing, the, the hole in that one for me is the fact that his shooting percentage was 27.3 last year, which is, which is high. sustainably P high, posturously mm -hmm. high, but. If that puts him in from a 39 goal pace to a 25, 26 goal pace, yeah. that's pretty good. I, I'd oh, like yeah. to know what it was this year. Uh, 12.7%. And it's also that's pretty reasonable. Also 50% because he had two shots last oh, night. Lol. Oh, lol. Um, but uh, yeah, 12.7%. No, 12, 12 he had eight goals in 43 games. Um, I think 
if he falls somewhere in the 15% range, you can find value on that contract. Yeah. No, there's definitely, there's a lot for, I think both teams won in that deal. Like both yeah. teams should be very happy. Um, Hunter Brustavich, the prospect they got, like Jeff Merrick called him the Adam Fox of the OHL, which is unreasonable for, <laughs> for a That's prospect, but he has a lot of upside. Like there, you got somebody who you can build on. And, um, and then with Kuzmenko, you got something there where it's like, this could be value come next trade deadline. Calgary should be very happy with the return for, and with Lindholm, that's somebody you weren't going to bring back. You got a whole bunch of stuff for somebody you weren't going to. Oh, no, they were, Jesse. (laughs) They were going to bring him back. Yeah. Just like Hannafin (laughs) and Tanev. All of them. They were going to re-sign Zadorov. But then they had a deal that was too great to pass up on. A third and a fifth? I mean, come on. By the way, just to show you how impossible it is for an agent to permanently burn a bridge, um, Kuzmenko is a Dan Milstein client, and so is Nikita Zadorov. Right. Right. Dan Milstein got on Twitter and was like, trade my guy to the Leafs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he basically did that like mid game, basically. And, the, and a couple months later, they trade one of his clients and, uh, or acquire one of his Kuzmenko clients. Kuzmenko had Calgary on his no trade list and he had to waive that. Yeah, there was the hold up that night when the trade was coming out. It didn't come out till like 10 p.m. or whatever it was, 930. And they had it was a delay because he mm-hmm. had to literally tell him you have to physically waive your no trade clause so you can go to Calgary. And he, he did. I think that it, I think him going to Calgary is him getting good advice, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, well, it's from, an opportunity. Yeah, you, he's never going to get that opportunity yeah. you need to be in the lineup dude yeah. um and he wasn't every night with vancouver you're not listen you're on a contract now mm-hmm. you're spending money every night you're not in the lineup and you're not scoring go somewhere get in the lineup play in the top six and kill it yep first game bang and you get to play with Kadri and huberto you could do worse like if you're a finisher those are two guys that you want to be Nice if you're the guy who resurrects Huberto's Flames career, they will give you money for that. <laughs> they will give you money for that. Yeah. Like we've we've been saying for months, they need to solve this. They need to find someone to play with Huberto. There you go. Mm-hmm. That might be it, right Just there. Get open. The it guy, might be it. The guy can. Uh, he's an assist king. He can. Uh, he can kill yeah, it. I think. I think Kuzmenko got some good advice from Gold Star. You know, uh, we, that's what we are. You're a gold star. <laughs> that's what we are. And, and on the Vancouver side, Lindholm is exactly what they needed. Like you see it happen the first game. You know, he's he's going to be on that power play and he's going to do damage. And they took away nothing from their lineup. They've been good all season long and they didn't need Kuzmenko. They weren't playing them and they just got the guy they need on their second line yeah. on their power play. They're set up perfectly for a good run here. So I don't know. Both sides did fantastic on this trade. The, the one thing I want to add is uh, Hunter Brustavich, um It's so much easier to trade a pick than a prospect. Mm-hmm. If if the Flames end up nailing it on that first or third or both or whatever it was, meh, whatever. Like, yeah. good for them and their scouting department. But if the Canucks trade a known quantity and he hits and he ends up torturing them for the next decade plus, that is going to add to the rivalry between the the uh, Canucks and the Flames. Like, and it, if the it, Vancouver Canucks win the Cup this year, then none of it matters. Then exactly. none of it matters. Not a single morsel of it. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say like like <laughs> Cup. If they go on a deep run here, I they think go to, they go to the Western Conference Final. F- f- fuck it. Like, who fuck gives it. a shit? Who gives about Hunter? You know, yeah. who cares about Hunter? Like, he yeah. can go have a great career. It's it was worth it. If uh, the Bruins draft Tuka Rask with a pick that the Leafs had gave given them, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be talking about it nearly as much. The Leafs pick the guy. They scouted him for a year. They knew who he was. Why am I talking like Paul Bear? They knew who the guy was, and they gave him to him. No, keep talking like Paul Bear. Why'd you stop? Oh, (laughs) Tuka. And uh, Yanni Yermo was also in that deal. I don't know if he's ever going to play in the NHL. Uh, 2002, baby. You know, he's still oh still twenty one. Oh man, he's past yeah. his prime. <laughs> so old as shit. A young kid, third round draft pick. I don't know what he's gonna be, Matt, but it's it's all gravy if you're Calgary. Matty, that's, that's the thing. What's your what's your birth year? Two thousand. Two thousand. Wow. I'm scared. You're scared. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being. I, I was hired at Kiss when I was twenty one, and I remember somebody said, "Wait, what year were you born?" 
And I said 1988, and they're like, "Oh my god, I feel so old." And now I'm now I'm in that. Now game. you're the old guy. Damn. Um, yeah. One one night, just not thinking, when I worked for uh, Junior Hockey Magazine with Gino Retta, um, I mentioned that they were talking about the first year they did the show, and I go, "Oh, I was five. And it, like I just blurted it out. I wasn't trying to prove a point and it shut the room down. Oh, like yeah. they all just had to like, all right, give me a, give me a sec here while I sit down and <laughs> contemplate life. They were pissed. And now I'm the old one. Oh my God. No. 2005? The Sorry. World Junior Age Bracket? Um, yeah, I think it's a 506. Kids? The current one? Wasn't that like when High School Musical was released? Yeah. Yeah, around that. And yeah. like Shrek? Why did you look at me like I would know the answer to that? Well, Jesse uh, actually. Because I'm an old. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> Jesse is well, a wildcat who kept his head in the game. Put it, it this way: true. they've never lived in a world where Sidney Crosby wasn't an NHL player, which is Whoa. crazy to me. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. crazy. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, we're all gonna die. It took us longer to get there today than it did yesterday. <laughs> uh, Jesse, I just sent you uh, the clip, and this is uh, this is one that so. Brandon Dillon will have a hearing today, but it wasn't what's weird about this hit. First off, the hit is crazy um, on the phone or in person. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I'll read you the tweet. Winnipeg's Brandon Dillon will have a hearing today for an illegal check to the head on Pittsburgh's Nolachari. Hearing. T I mean, my assumption is that's got to be less than five, right? My assumption is he hasn't gone from Pittsburgh to New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Unless or, or, or taking the Zoom because nobody goes in person anymore. Yeah, I mean Pittsburgh. Um, I mean, no, you have to. <laughs> when when Brendan Gallagher got what was it four? Mm -hmm. um, like that's crazy. You have to essentially try to commit murder um, to get more than five. I mean, Achari was a part of the play here. Man, yeah. Kind of. We, I mean, <laughs> like kind of like that's what they'd argue like if you're Peros that's yeah. what we we had a bit of a debate in the group chat yesterday like what was worse between this or Gallagher I mean he catches him so flush in the head that it's it's surely it's at least three games like this is vicious with, with this one the only grace I give Brendan Dillon here is I understand how this happened a little bit more than I understand how Gallagher happened. Yeah, I mean, listen, if if Nolachari is is skating upright, yeah, that's a hit to the chest. Uh, but it's but it's not. But it's not. And but here, this is what I always argue: it, the onus is on the player throwing the hit. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, protect yourself. Yes, obviously, but it's your job as the person laying the hit to throw. Ate an eligible hit at an eligible player. Agreed. And, and I he think, failed. I think the reason that we've got that backwards is the the people of the Don Cherry mantra, which is keep your head up. The When I was growing up and when I was playing hockey, it was always the onus is on you. If you get beaned, that's because you weren't paying attention. Well, and and that's mean, actually not how no, it works. But no. that is literally how they taught it at hockey school. Listen, it's good advice. Yeah. You should keep your head up. Yes, but also... Do your utmost to not get killed out but there. But what about if we started with throw a clean hit? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're blaming the victim here. <laughs> and I think I think Achari, I mean, his head, his helmet fall, falling off, like it was that was a that's a crazy ass hit. You know what? Yeah. We got it all wrong. The stop signs that we have in the back of jerseys. Mm. No. It should it should just be should on your gloves go. so that you can see, like keep your head up. It should just say that on the back of your gloves. Look so at him. You look, can look. see it. Oh, he just gets the puck over to, oh my God. Uh, Justin Fisher had the greatest line in the group chat last night, which was Brendan Dillon lined up Noel Achari before he left the house. <laughs> so my problem with the Dillon playing the puck thing is the puck is there and Dillon is blowing past him. He's actually, I didn't even realize <laughs> so, that. Yeah, he's not trying to separate. So he can make a good play on the puck. <laughs> I don't think he was trying to play the puck ever. And but, if I'm oh. the Department of Player Safety, I say evidence number one of you not doing hockey stuff and just hitting a guy in the head. He'll get two games. Two? Two or three. I think it's four. You think so? Yeah, I'd say four. Steve, think, what's your bet? Uh, I think you're right. I think it should be at least three. Hmm. I think you're right that it's two. No, I didn't say two. I thought you did. Adam said two. Oh, I Adam, think I think you're right. Yeah? Just, I, you're totally right. I say what four. Did you say? 
Adam says two. What do you say? I'll say three then. Three? Okay. Yeah. Winner gets to eat an apple when Adam brings them in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's you can only really look at the apples if you do Yeah, win. if you lose, you get disqualified ah, from, from the, the apple the, eating. Listen. And Adam, if you lose again, you got to bring in double the amount of apples. I'm going to go to like Pusateri's for like crazy <laughs> ass apples. No, I want you to pick them. You want me to, Oh, you want me to go to an orchard? Yeah, no, fly to somewhere where it's apple season. I was like, it's February, bro. I, I said fly. Take your private jet. True, true. Yeah, just fly to apple season. Me and, and Robert Hershowitz on the Shohei Otani J Express. Exactly. And you we'll and Taylor are coming back from Tokyo. Yep. Or wherever the concert is. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So we'll go get some out. apples. Okay. Dine on Super Bowl apples. That's right. <laughs> um, Nick Benino will not report to Hartford of the AHL. The Rangers did put him on waivers and he said, listen, guys, I don't want to go down. So then they put him on unconditional waivers for purposes of termination. I guess they gave Benino the opportunity to think about what he wanted to do over the all-star break. He said, listen, I, I want another opportunity to play somewhere. Nick Benino, who is winding up his career, is going to end up somewhere. Yeah. Somebody's going to take a chance on this guy. Yeah. What do all teams need going to the playoffs? Experience. Depth. Mm -hmm. Depth. Well, yeah. here's here's what I'm looking tell at. Tell me, tell me you don't like like for instance the Leafs who have no depth. Tell me you don't like Nick Benino on the fourth line, dude. Here, here's here's where I'm at. Okay. okay, so 45 games this season, one goal, five points. That's bad. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, but what what I've had said to me is, well, you know, maybe it just hasn't worked with the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Last year he had 10 goals, pretty good. Nine assists for 19 points in 59 games with the Sharks. Bit of a different opportunity. He was the Sharks and Penguins last year. Oh, yeah. He got traded to the Penguins. For yeah, three, three, games. three games. Nothing. I don't know if he got hurt. But then the season before that even, he had 16 goals. That is good. 26 points. That's not in 80 games. Is this... Those feel guy? like Ryan Dezingle stats. Like, I guess what I'm getting at is... Could he still play in the NHL? Yes. Is this the best you can do? No. Yeah, For free, it's probably. Free. That's what I'm about to say. That he's is free. the thing. So, oh, dude, the him. moment he was bought out or whatever. No, sorry. Had his contract terminated. I'm like, oh, could he be better on the fourth line than Pontus Holmberg? You can move Pontus Holmberg up. Yes, you can. Because he's actually more valuable up. Apparently. Season. Especially with one hand. Apparently. So I do think he lands somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? Good on him. Yeah. Because uh, he very clearly wants another shot at a cup. He would have made more money if he had simply reported to Hartford. Yes. Yeah, but he doesn't need the money. <laughs> he doesn't. No, he wants to win. Yeah. Oh, Jesse doesn't, everyone. Um, I had no idea Nick Benino was 35. I know it's crazy. Isn't yeah, it seems like uh, forever ago, or it seems yeah. like just yesterday, I should say. It makes me very upset that this man is. We're, we're talking about how old and finished he is, and he was yeah. born literally a week after Adam Wild. I know yeah. it makes me think too about Phil Kessel, uh, because Phil is another guy that's out there, He's and older. there's several articles about him this year. Going, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. But see, to me, Kessel's a better player. Well, but, you know what you could do. But what's the yeah, you could. <laughs> you could get two thirds of the HBK line. <laughs> but what what if you're if you're looking to augment and get your 13th or 14th forward, which is what these guys would be, right? They're not everyday players on a good team. No. On a great okay. team going to the playoffs, right? Right. Um what are they gonna offer you in the bottom? Like like so so forget for instance, Phil Kessel was better defensively than people gave him credit for. Me. Tough to knock off the puck. Yeah. Uh, but you know he provide he would provide maybe some scoring although his goal scoring completely disappeared in Vegas. Yeah, his transition from goal scorer to playmaker was smooth, but then it was like, oh, okay, he can't score. Remember last year, CJ and uh, his little report about Kessel saying hammer the over on his goal scoring. It was sixteen. He didn't get there. Yeah. So I feel like players for free on the players for free chart, Nick Benino, given what he could probably bring, you know, when a couple of players will go down in the playoffs, especially if you're going in a deep run. I don't mind that. Yeah. I don't need him to play. Does he play 10 more regular season games? Who cares? You need him for the three or four games in the playoffs where somebody's down and you need some experience. That's what I think. I, I like, I'm sure his stats are terrible. I'm sure that I'm going to get so many charts tweeted at me, but it, again, it comes down to, 
what if he's your 13th or your 14th guy, that experience, like the Leafs 13th or 14th guy is always some guy that's just come out of nowhere in the AHL. I would love a 13th or 14th guy to be a guy that's won a cup. I mean, we got What's Ryan Reeves. That? We got Ryan Reeves. But like He's been to the final. Been to the final, scored a goal. Yep. You know, I I want to have I want to have a guy that's like, okay, mentally I'm tough enough for this. Yeah. I'm I'm trying like, I don't, to think of where like I'm trying to think of a playoff team where he makes sense. Wait, are you talking about Kessel or Benino? Benino. I'm doing both, really. Um, I don't think Kessel makes sense on any team. He needs to I think a team would sign him mm -hmm. if because you get healthy scratched, your Iron Man streak's over. And he's fine with that. Yeah, he said good. he said he doesn't okay, he doesn't good. care. He's good. already said that. He also got has a Stanley Cup. Two. Like Phil Kessel is three. Like, he's three now. Oh, three. Sorry. Sorry. Three. He has three. Like he's he's won. So that's not a motivator. You know, he I think he just wants to play. Yeah, and Benino's got two. Yeah, it's I think they'll both land. I don't think you light money on fire like Benino did. If you don't have some sort of idea of the interest out there, yeah, your, your agent tells you, hey, there yeah. might be a job out there for you. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, he could have made more because of escrow going to the AHL. I think we're going to hear over the next day or two, mm -hmm. Benino's going to sign somewhere. Kessel's different. He doesn't even have a contract. Yeah. Phil Kessel it's or didn't like have it's a contract. February 7th. Nobody's taking a chance on you now. It might like I don't know I don't know does he go overseas does he keep playing does he no. do the world championships Oh you know? that'd be cool I mean it might it might end up working out that way I'm I'm Are we waiting like are we what is the deadline March 9th to play in the playoffs like, like are we 4 weeks away from a Phil Kessel retirement announcement if he can't play in the playoffs this year you know Ooh. I'd love to see him in the oh. world championships Yeah I would Don't you think I would too I don't think it's going to end up that way. What do you think it's going to end up? I want to know you what think Phil in the next four looks weeks? like with basically a year off. In the next four weeks, does somebody pick him up? I hope so, but I doubt it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would have done it by now. Although the salary cap makes shit really difficult. So Yeah. Um, it gets, there's more room as the year goes on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so there's, there's a chance, you know, and like injuries happen. Maybe a playoff team is just like, we need just an extra guy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're just watching box scores all night and someone gets hurt and you go, oh, no. And then you call them immediately, <laughs> trying to get in their good graces. Um, John Tavares made news this morning uh, because he is being audited by the CRA, who are a joy to deal with. Mm. Uh, now, it has to do with the way his contract is structured. And one of the things the Leafs have done to get people in the door and get them on the deals that they want is they offer a gigantic salary signing bonuses. Yes. Sorry, not salary signing bonus, a signing bonus, and they make their salary super low. So his salary would be like 900 grand, but his signing bonus would be like 8 million. Okay? And that's what's, what's at stake here. Now, what his side is arguing is that the signing bonus is an inducement, meaning it's taxed differently at 15%. Uh, what the Canadian government is saying is, no, you're in the highest tax bracket. This is income. We're taxing you at 36%. So what we don't know is how this is going to end up, but it's a pretty high profile thing. So here's here's how I understand it. So it's for 2018. Mm -hmm. Here's how it actually broke down. So he was an Islander at the beginning of 2018. Mm -hmm. So he made his Islander money. Then he comes to Toronto. The day he signs that contract, if I'm not mistaken, a signing bonus of 15.25 million hits that bank account. Mm -hmm. The rest of the year, he has a base salary of 650,000, mm -hmm. right? So he's being taxed on, I'm ballparking it, like, 20 million dollars yep something like that but 15.25 of it is the signing bonus in question that his camp is arguing should be taxed at 15 percent not what was it 38 38 percent that's that's quite the it's amount a lot of money. money that's quite the amount but of money we're talking about two and a half three million bucks uh difference let me do it 
It's okay. We don't need to get yes. this. Yes, we do. <laughs> and it's the the article outlines some of his argument to the CRA as well because they say the the bonus was paid directly into his New York bank account. So it was it was from America, and there's that's that's the fifteen percent that he's arguing is that there's the agreement between the U.S. and Canada where it's only fifteen percent as opposed to like a uh, a salary in Canada, and he only spent forty five days in Canada that year. So in 2018, he was only in Canada for 45 days. So that's the basis of his argument. Well, there. yeah. And if you spend less than six months in Canada, I think there's like for people that like leave and go snowboarding, mm -hmm. um, you lose your health care. Yeah, the difference so, is something like two and a half million. So if you're I can understand him getting like, hey, I'm, I'm paying for all this. But, you know, I was only here 45 days. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. So yeah, yeah, NHL taxes are a completely I can't imagine what kind of nightmare that is going into different jurisdictions and and each year having to pay taxes based on that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh I don't know if I'm at liberty to tell the full story with all the names, mm -hmm. but um there was a story that I heard from the United States where a uh, someone was audited something like 4 years in a row mm -hmm. by the IRS and they were a very good boy when it came to um, their taxes, they told all their people involved, I do not want to be in the news, do everything properly, blah, blah, blah. But they got audited for four straight years. They called up the IRS and discovered that there was basically a vendetta against them from someone who cheered for a team, like a rival team, basically. Oh my God. And they had it white from the record. And as far as I know, they haven't been audited since. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that it's listen. <laughs> so I'm saying there's some Habs fan out there. No, I'm kidding. I'm not actually putting that <laughs> out there. I'm just I'm just saying it would be you got to imagine it's possible that someone from the CRA went, oh, there's a discrepancy here. That's kind of weird. John Tavares? Yeah. <laughs> I think Howard Stern, when he got into syndication in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, he had a syndication company. And that's how you really make money in radio. You don't make it, or you at least you used to. I don't think you make money that way anymore either. But he... Um, you make money in radio by getting packaged out. He thought it was funny. Uh, he thought it was funny to have like... A, um, to have like it be like a stupid name. So it was like... It had. I remember him telling this story, and he was like, it, "It had like balls in the name, or something like that, right? Some some stupid name." Sure. So every year they got audited until they changed the name of the company because an a a person who had worked on the other side said, "Listen, if you have a name like that for your company, the auditors are just going to pick it out of the line. That's that's the one we're doing this year." And so he got audited like three four years in a row just because his company's name was so stupid <laughs> and and immature and childish. And so he had to change it to like Stratton Oakmont. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> just a bunch of numbers, right? Like it's, you know, a lot oh, of times man. corporations are just named numbers. They're not even the brand. So it, it's, it's funny how that all works. But that, again, I'm sure computers pick it out at random now. But back then it was people. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I mean, it could be both. Uh, the, the dispute with uh, JT, it's they're asking him for an additional six point eight million dollars oh plus one point two million dollars in interest. So, oh my god, that gives me heart pop. So they're asking him to hand over eight million dollars. So I would be fighting that. You understand why he's going to bat for his eight million dollars. Uh -huh. And yeah, I assume he's got some nice lawyers on this. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I'm yeah. sure he does. Um Gary Bettman, uh, according to Frank Saravalli, Daily Faceoff, will have an announcement about the Coyotes. Okay. In the next couple of weeks. Now, Saravalli <laughs> tweeted this morning something that we all kind of already knew, which is Phoenix Suns majority owner Matt Matt Ishbia is not interested. Mm -hmm. So there are two options here. They find a piece of land uh, or they move to Utah. Now, are you it, gonna, what you're they're saying is... You're press play on yesterday's episode? All they're saying... <laughs> I, I'm just updating you and I'm not going to stay on this long. All, all they're saying is now the the option one of those options is gone. So, so there you go. There you go, guys. <laughs> Could be an announcement this weekend. Could be. I'm not doing this again. Okay, well, I just thought. I'm not, I'm you don't have a choice. You have to do it. Uh, yeah, I do. N no. Next time you talk about the Coyotes in a building, I'm walking out of the room. No. I'm what curious. If, I'm walking out of the fucking what room. If it's that the, what if it's that the Coyotes are coming over? That is the only thing. What if they're coming over to play video games with you? Does it, no, no, no. Clayton the next Keller time we Dangle. talk about the Coyotes 
building situation, it will either be they're fucking off mm -hmm. or they got one. I'm done. Everyone's done. Enough. Broke ass. Get a building or I don't care. Holy shit. What? I'm, I'm, I don't know what the announcement could be. Uh, it's that they're moving to Utah or that they found a piece of land. That's what those are the two options. So, but like, where did this land come from? Well, so is, if is they that... have the land, Jesse, <laughs> if they have the land, yeah. the earliest that the arena would yeah. open, the earliest is 27, 28, which means they would oh be in the God. college arena for six years. I, it's, it's new, Steve. I have to talk about it. <laughs> Steve, this is probably annoying for people listening because they don't know what you're saying. What, the topic? No, you... Trying to talk without a microphone. It's important. It's important. <laughs> no, it's very not. It's actually not. It's it wasn't important, important yesterday either. Yes, it was. No, like, we're all grown-ups. There's 32 teams. 31 of them have their shit in order. Get a building, broke-ass. Like, I'm done. That's over. It's over. Until they have actually something to say, I don't fucking care. That's fair. Tell me about the on-ice product or get out of my face. Enough. Holy I am fuck. telling you about the on ice product. Specifically, what building it will take. Oh, yeah. Visit. Where is the ice located? <laughs> is it frozen? Like, Jesus. Um, Enough. Some other news yesterday that that will affect pretty much everybody, uh, especially stateside. This is a huge, huge deal. ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery uh, will have basically a... Um, uh, uh, they're teaming up Able streaming. to give fans another streaming option. No. Uh, and this is really interesting because for the consumer, um, we're not totally sure if that means you have to have a subscription to just one of these things or if it means all of these things. But basically, the the they're, they're expecting the price to be $40 to $50 a month. Um, and what has happened in the last three... Well, I mean, that's what, that's what Sportsnet Plus is. Sportsnet Plus is fifty dollars a month. Yeah, then it's too much. It's outrageous. But um, uh, what's interesting about this is that four or five years ago, when some of the big deals, like I, I'm going to use Joe Rogan as an example, when Joe Rogan signed his deal with Spotify, one of the things that we used to laugh about on this podcast is like, "Wow, I watched a video about a car. Here's forty Joe Rogan YouTube videos. Oh, I know. Jordan Peterson owns a feminist. Like, you know, it was just, it was just they, they had that algorithm on YouTube unlocked. They were really, really good at spreading Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah. And all of a sudden, overnight, he signs with Spotify, hundred million dollars, three years, and it's gone. And what Spotify found out was that they couldn't get the value of Joe Rogan's podcast just on their network because all it did was piss off his base, right? Piss off yes. people that don't have Spotify and they lost listeners. So you weren't allowed, you weren't as, you weren't making as much on the advertising because your numbers were lower. So they've now signed an incentive-based deal with Joe where he can go back out to everything and it's worth as much as $250 million because he can go back out into the world. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of this, at least in the United States, with these big companies that used to sort of wall off content. Well, now they're going to work together because the idea is if you had one of those three streaming services, you might want the sports package with it too, but you don't have to have all three to get the sports package. And therefore, it opens up the... Uh, the game, whatever you're trying to watch, to more people. Mm -hmm. And the sports rights now from the leagues, the NBA, um, NCAA, that sort of thing, are so expensive that that's the only way that you could justifiably make a business case to carry them. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is going to be, it's fascinating from a business perspective. And hopefully, because I, from what I've heard, we don't have HBO Max in Canada because Crave holds the rights, but I've heard the HBO Max app, or just called Max, is it works really well. And I know ESPN has been a real pain in the ass for hockey fans. So hopefully this they take the best of all three companies here. Uh, that's Fox, that's Disney, and that's Warner Brothers Discovery. And they're able to put out really great products. This is going to have zero impact on my life because we live in Canada where two companies have a monopoly on sports and television and internet and cable and everything. And nothing's going to change up here because we don't get those lovely companies down there. To yeah. that, to and that video point, series the... names. <laughs> Blue Room. I wondered about that. I wondered about that, guys, and I thought, is this deal, like, this deal is so big, 
so big. How big is it? It's so big. It's so many big. I wonder <laughs> I wondered if it is the if the eventual aim is bigger than North America. Yeah. Or bigger than the United States. Because this, you know, America is what, 350, 400 million people? We're 40 million people. But this feels like couldn't you make this work in Mexico where they have lots more people than they do in Canada? I'm not talking about Canada necessarily, but I do yeah. feel like this feels like a, the audience for this could be so much bigger if they go to Europe and they get premier, premier league rights. Like if they find a business model that works here, then they could just go buy everything up. Yeah. Canada, no. Other countries, yes. Yeah, because Canada is just too small. There's two, there's, one is too small and there's two companies that own everything that wouldn't ever let anybody on in on their territory. Right. Which is a rest of the world, yeah. I, th I think there's there's a very good reason for them to do that. But in here, I don't know if it's uh, penetrable. Mm. Um, mm. You Crazy. know, you know how uh, older folks, as in folks older than us, that's how I'm going to refer to them, uh, are like, why do kids these days just watch video games? Like they watch people streaming video games. You know why? It's free. Well, it's entertaining. I mean, that's why. But it's also entertaining and free. Mm -hmm. Like. At what point do people go, I'm not uh, watching sports? <laughs> like, I uh, I don't think that'll ever happen. I think sports are sort of... They're driving it. Timeless and, you know, uh, it's like uh, the unsinkable ship. But, you you sorry, to make sure I understand, you want to charge me five to $600 a year to watch sports? Now, you are watching a lot more than you ever could before. Yeah. Like before, when we were growing up, the reason that reporters used to fly around with the teams is because you quite literally couldn't see the game. In certain markets, right. you couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. There were Leaf games that went untelevised as recently as the 90s. That's unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah. But, it's, but it happened. Or games and that I were think, on Leafs TV. Yeah. And I think, yeah. Steve, you should like be willing to pay for good services. Like I, I, I subscribe to like The Athletic because I'm willing to pay for that journalism because I support it and it's good. Yes. You know, and with, with this, if... It comes because it's Disney, uh, HBO. The Warner Brothers, HBO. Yeah, that's so HBO is 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 uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is the name yes. of the company, and then Fox. So and and Fox. So with that, you're getting ESPN, TNT, TBS, uh, HBO stuff, FS1, FS2, and all that stuff. So if if like if I if I'm an NBA fan mm. and I get TNT and ESPN on this, that covers basketball. Yeah. And if I get the ABC Network games, that, that that's good. You know, yeah. so like I might look at this and say, yeah, 40 bucks a month for for just and I can cancel my cable, which might cost me $80. Right. That's, that's worth it. So I think we're at an awkward transitional point. Like there's a resistance to listen, I'm subscribed to too much shit. Sure. If you put it all under one more expensive, but more inclusive thing, I think people will be open to that. Yeah, yeah. And that's where this could be a really and good I, thing. And I don't think those things should be free. Like, I don't think. No, no. No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting them to be free. But, okay. like, like, I believe me, I've looked at my credit card statement recently and I've been like, okay, that's too much. Yeah. That's too much shit. I think you're at a point where you got to cut back on what's important to you in terms of the streaming services, for sure. Because there's so many of them. And what, what is frustrating to me is, like, a lot of people pointed out, like, okay, this is just cable. Um, I feel like we could have gotten here so much sooner, but a lot of these giant telecoms were incredibly resistant, uh, to all of it. And they intentionally held back the technology and now they're realizing they can't force people to change their habits and their lives. And they're like, all right, let's just make cable mm -hmm. on a different more accessible platform. Yeah, now, I think all, a lot of these companies they they've they've looked they looked at the streaming models that everybody started. You know, Netflix comes out with this, and they say, okay, we can make our own Netflix, and our pie is going to be uh, two inches big. You know, but if we teamed up and we took both of our streaming services services, we could make a pie that's six inches big, and our splits of the pie are more than if we did our own pie, which is only two inches. Now we get three inches. Each, and I've heard know? that six inches is more than enough. Yeah, right? it's. it's <laughs> Um, but, but here's the, the that, thing about the athletic has a, con has a, a paragraph that I wanted to read to you. It said, sure. if these guys, cause they wanted to stay separate as Steve mentioned, then mm -hmm. they did hold the technology back. We're still seeing that in Canada. Yes. They said, however, if they want to fight the nearly unlimited pockets of Amazon, Apple, or Netflix, mm -hmm. 
They're going to have to get more serious about sports and they're going to have to do it together because they don't have the market share, you know, and, and, and they don't have the money. And, and it's weird to say, oh, Disney doesn't have the money. Apple might buy, buy Disney. That's, buy it. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Buy it cash. Like, it's crazy. And, and so, that, like, that's, that's what you're dealing with. And, and so now the new broadcasters are not broadcasters. Like, in Canada, broadcasting companies haven't been broadcasting companies for years. They've been telecoms that happen to have broadcasting. But Bell & Rogers, I'm sure, if you were to look at the amount of revenue that even at its peak when those guys owned um, broadcasting, I'm sure it was 5 or 6% of the entire company. You know, you're talking about companies that own cable and phone and everything else that goes internet access. Like that is where the money is. Yes. Amazon delivers shit to your house. That's their business. But they also do some sports on the side. Yes. Right. And then they, the reason they have the sports is to help you sign up for Prime so you can have shit delivered to your house. And that is going to be the thing that they have to fight against. And I'm, I'm very, very curious to see how this goes. Um, and, you know, there are players like CBS that were not involved. So that that's also interesting. We'll uh, see yeah. if that but, happens. Yeah, NBC yeah. as well. Yeah, boy, oh boy, I, Peacock. man. Yeah. <laughs> Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. Why that one? Why do they? Need, I know it's the Peacock colors and stuff like that, but Peacock as a streaming service just not a it's not a great name. I don't think. I think NBC. Oh, oh no! You got to put your mic on. Your mic. Lisa. I think NBC. Their logo looks more like a peacock. Well, that's what it that's is. A, that's that's their that streaming. Is, site. That's under the same branch. That yeah. is them. Oh, yeah, okay. it's NBC streaming that. site. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Didn't yeah. know. Uh, yeah, and and so I don't know. It'll be fascinating to see how this all ends up. But the I think the days of uh the what do they call it closed circuit programming where they you know you got to have all these things all at once to make it work. I think those days are coming to an end very quickly because you need scale. Yeah. Any like, business needs scale. Dude, my parents, um, they're willing to pay for this stuff and they're actually they're decently technologically savvy but they're getting pissed because they're adapting and they're not being rewarded for it all they're being told is give us more you know okay uh you got you got netflix all right well now you got to get crave Mm -hmm. and you got crave well now you got to get paramount plus and you got paramount plus well your grandson's coming over you better get disney plus and okay fuck so i think that's that's enough so i think that's changing too because what was the most watched show in 2023 outside of sports? Uh, some sort of kids show. Blippy. Bluey. Suits. And suits? Oh. oh, I saw a story about suits this. Suits was the most watched show in the world. Yeah. Yet last year. And, it's be- and it hasn't aired a new show since 2019. And I don't know if you've noticed. I have. Because this matters at my house. But the first two seasons of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills are on Netflix. Wait a second. That's a Hey You product. Which is a part of Amazon. So what they what what you're also seeing on the lifestyle and entertainment side is that they're starting to sell some of these things out again because they aren't reaching the audiences that justify the cost yeah. to buy them. Oh, there's some show I've never seen before that has like a hundred episodes. Okay, so I'll just go back and watch that. Yeah, cool, huh? Uh, that is kind of cool. N- nothing is better than cable right now, though. They no matter how good the streaming technology is right now, it's still not better than having like an Ignite box. You could stop, rewind the TV, go forward, record it all. It's all there in 4K. Like they still haven't been able to replicate a direct cable comparison to streaming service. And they'll eventually they'll get there with the technology and everything. But right now it's still, if you want peak quality television and everything you can do, nothing's gonna be just having a cable box. And that's on purpose. That's yes. on purpose in Canada. They purposely make the cable box mm-hmm. better picture because because if you bought the expensive TV, well, you're going to need the cable box. And yep. no, we're not going to give you anything above 720p on streaming. Mm-hmm. So you, you recording this- games like well, I, okay. I, well, I don't watch commercials anymore. It's awesome. So so be- I wanted to ask you about that because I had a service and I won't say who. <laughs> when you recorded a game, you still couldn't fast forward the commercials. You could fast forward the game. Could not fast forward. No, no, that's <laughs> that's so not your how service I, allows. Yeah, that. I have Rogers Rogers Ignite, and you can record a game and go back and watch it. And you fast forward, rewind everything you want. Yeah. Interesting. No, yeah. the uh, the telecoms with streaming technology. It's like you ever see, you know that scene in Liar Liar where, where Jim Carrey goes to the bathroom and beats the shit out of himself. Yeah, that's every telecom <laughs> with every streaming service ever. Yeah, it's uh, never made sense. Jesse, let's do the press conference. The Presser S-D-P. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. 
Uh, did you want to? I guess we could stay on the topic a little because we had a question from Nico that sort of relates here. I'll ask that first before we go to the other ones. Nico. Uh, Nico says Netflix announced a documentary about the 20, 2004 Red Sox, which former cup teaming, oh, which former cup winning team should receive similar treatment. And just to just talk about what Nico's talking about, Netflix is doing a two series run with the current Reds. Well, with one with the current Red Sox and one with the 2004 Red Sox, where they're going to do a documentary on that. But they're also going to follow the current Red Sox this season for a uh, drive to survive. Uh, imagine promoting your team. <laughs> yes. So by allowing, imagine, a so, so allowing people with the inner workings. So them? now that Netflix is doing this with the Red Sox, Every all four major leagues are covered, or all three except for hockey are covered now with a Netflix type series, mm -hmm. plus NASCAR, plus tennis, plus golf, plus F1. So, out of seven major leagues across the world, the NHL is the only one without some sort of because Netflix. It's because they don't need it. Just ask them. They don't need it. Pickleball. They don't need it. Don't Pickleball need it. is going to be on there any day now. So yeah, and then I'll have to come up with something else. Yeah, you have to come up with a new line. We'll the battle bots. But they don't need it, Jesse. No. Ask them. No, it's ridiculous. They it's, don't need that. When I saw this, I was like, oh yeah. So the NHL is the only one without some sort of Netflix deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, so to answer his question, ninety six. The ninety six Avs is an extremely good answer. Mm -hmm. um, I have a better one. Well, coming from Quebec and also getting Patrick Waugh. 94 Rangers. No Stanley Cup in, in over 30-something oh, yeah. years. Uh, Mark Messier calling his shot. Yeah. Uh, like, And think about this. Okay, so they've got... Um, just going to run you through their top five, six scorers, okay? Zubov, Messier, Graves, Leach, Larmer, Kovalev, Gartner, Tikkanen, Tony Amante, Kevin Lowe. Like, they had... This team, Eddie Olchuk's on that team. Nick Kiprios is on that team. Craig McTavish is on that team. Mike Glenn Richter. Glenn, Glenn Anderson. Joe Koser. Like, this is Glenn Healy. Like, they're all, there's there's some real personality on that team. That's a team that you want to talk to, except Mark Messier sucks in interviews. We'll see. Oh, he's brutal. We'll see if, uh, it, you know, it'd be interesting if they did it. It's just he'd have to actually talk. Yeah, well, Mark, we're going to talk about how good you are. Oh, okay. You have my undivided attention. Um, Here's a question. Is it possible... I find the older stuff is just better. Mm -hmm. Like part of why I think um, uh, the last dance did so well is so much time has passed and all the interview subjects involved uh, have run out of fucks to give and they'll just say whatever mm -hmm. they'll say how they honestly feel is 2011 too recent. Like with the Bruins, uh, they, they went to three game sevens. Marshan's still playing. Right. Yeah. yeah, you got it. You got to be. You got to be ten years past playing. Yeah. Because you have to. Like, it's not only that you have to be sort of be on the team, but the management that manages that team has yeah. to then be fired too. Like, it has to be yeah. a long time. Here's another one. Why hasn't there been one on the Oilers dynasty of the '80s? And I'm not talking about a 20 minute segment on Sportsnet where they talk to one person and mm -hmm. it's Kevin Lowe. Mm -hmm. I want a full blown Gretzky, Messier, Curry. Your um, Paul Coffey, tell, give me Peter Pocklington, give me all the people that put that together. Their 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 move from the WHA, their 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 sweep. I think the Islanders swept them the first time they went to the finals, and then that coming back and winning it in Game Six or Seven the next year against the same Islanders. Here's one. How about uh, it starts with the Oilers winning the cup, the summer, the wedding. And Gretzky gets traded. I'm so sick of Gretzky getting traded. I don't care. Oh, you're done with that, done. eh? I don't care. There's been so many. There has That's overdone. Okay. That is overdone. Other shit happened in the 80s than Gretzky going to Los Angeles. I would. <laughs> Honestly. I would. Like, you know what's another great one that you could talk about? What? Patrick Waugh, rookie, 1986, coming in and winning the cup with the Montreal Canadiens when the Oilers should have won. And they fucked it up in the against Calgary. Mm -hmm. And then Calgary goes to the finals against Montreal. And Montreal wins with some guy named Patrick Waugh with a white mask. No one's heard of this guy. Like that, that is cool. You know, another one would be great. 2009 Penguins. 2009 Penguins. It's the rematch, Hosa, that whole storyline. No one talks about the, the fact that when Mario Lemieux was drafted, he didn't get up. Right. Refused to put on the jersey. Right. And then... The team proceeded to not even make the playoffs for the next like six years. Yep. In a 21 team league where 16 teams made it. They were pretty crap. Like there's, there's, so, there are so many great stories. It's just a question of 
can you get these guys to talk? And and the thing that drove the Michael Jordan documentary was that Michael Jordan was producing it. Right. It was his company, right? So that's what I would say. If you're going back there, there has to be an impetus for these guys to want to talk. And Michael, why would he do it for anybody else? Do it for himself. So that now that now he's talking because he needs it to be a success, right? So you need Wayne on board to talk want, about Wayne. I want to see Lindy Ruff call the the cup winning goal from '99 a joke. I need to see that. Yeah, it was a joke. I like that. I like that. I'd be into that. Um, 96 Avs is a really good answer. The only you know what sucks about the 96 Avs, they swept the final. Mm. Boo. Anticlimactic mm. finish. Boo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. I remember I had a, a VHS. They used to do this, like these promotional videos. So like, you know, the the whole thing with the Leafs, uh, the return of the passion where the whole joke yeah. on Leafs Twitter about the passion. There was a, a, a VHS that was literally called The Passion Returns. Hell yeah. And it was about that 92-93 season and how those guys came out of nowhere and it was, how special it was. I had one for Detroit in 1997 and it, or 1998 when it came out because they won the cup. And it had like a hockey town theme song and they interviewed Iserman and Draper and Kosher and all the guys on that team. And they talked about what happened with Vladimir Konstantinov and, and his accident and oh like, my God. Oh my God, the 97 Red Wing. Yes. Or yeah. was it 98? No, it was uh, yeah, 98. 97, 98, something like that. Oh, uh, that's the answer. It's a crazy, that's a great one. It's gotta be them. Who'd they, ah, another sweep in the final. Yeah. Dude. It was good until. Like Legion of Doom, but then they didn't win. A, the Legion of Doom didn't win a game. Uh, oh, and the 90, you would have all those Avs battles. Oh, shit, man. Mm-hmm. There's some There's some good answers there. There's no perfect one. Mm-hmm. Next question. Yeah. In honor of Pierre Engvall, this is from <laughs> Carlos. No. What was Steve's favorite interaction with a giraffe when he worked at the zoo? Uh, well, there's two that stick out. There's... Uh, I, I think I wrote about this in the book. No way. Looks deep into the camera. Um, there was a, we were parking the Zoomobile one night. The Zoomobile was the bus um, that we did the tours on. Someone had to drive. Someone had to be at the back. I was at the back because I wasn't licensed to drive those vehicles. I never even took my test. Um, there was a guy taking a photo in the giraffe enclosure. He simply climbed. <laughs> I know this story, yeah. He could have died an extremely brutal and awful death. And so we just had to gently walk over calmly, not scream at the guy, didn't want to startle the animal, get him out of that enclosure. And they were gone before security arrived. The other one was there's a video you can still find on YouTube of my terrible haircut. Um, The Toronto Zoo hired me to do a video promoting their new carousel. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's very funny because there's, um, there's, uh, like sped up footage of them building the carousel, but if you were to slow it down, like you would see me just like helping them carry stuff, Mm. like, because I was still working at the zoo when they made that video. And, uh, over the course of shooting that video, I got to feed a giraffe. Oh, that's cool. And, and I stood in the giraffe house and the giraffe put their head into this window and I felled them. I don't know, fed them kibble or whatever it is, like whatever giraffe food is. It was like little pellets out of what was basically a bleach bottle cut in half so I could hoist it up to the giraffe and it could just put its mouth in and use its enormous tongue to scoop it all out. Okay. I've fed a giraffe. I have I have been face to face with one because I used to do Celebrate the County for what? Rogers TV 10 in, in, in Simcoe County. Um, and what, I, what struck me was how big their boogers are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> giraffe boogers are crazy. They're man. impossible. Yeah. <laughs> you look at them and you're like, how is this on earth? Yeah. They're huge. Like the nostrils were like this. A hippo is alarming and a yes. rhinoceros is alarming, but you're like, I guess I get it. A giraffe. That's a dinosaur. That's a dinosaur with fur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How are you on? How do we share the same planet? Yeah, it's true. My, Aliens would come here and be like, how are you both like the ecosystem supports both of you? Yeah. That's Jesse, weird. My interaction with a giraffe, uh, full spoilers for The Last of Us comes with uh, when you're in the second last scene of the game and you're going <laughs> towards the hospital and then you're in that building and then Ellie runs away and you're like, damn it, Ellie, come back here. And then you run upstairs and then she's feeding a giraffe. 
That's my interaction with a giraffe. Damn, that's crazy. So we've both fed a giraffe. Yeah, yeah. We no. are the same. We are the same. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fabulous scene. Fabulous scene. The same. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, great game. Uh, this is from Zachary Kemp. So I've been very bullish on the Penguins this year. I believe they're a playoff team. I think they're going to be good. And Adam Wilde has been the opposite. So Zachary Kemp asks, how does noted Penguins hater Adam Wilde feel about Jari leading the league in shutouts? I think good for him. And I actually was sent to stat by somebody else. <laughs> that's, that's I think good for him. That I, sounds very condescending. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean it to be that way. I think it was like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. What Adam means is good for him. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh. <laughs> I was doing like a deep dive wow. on the Penguins and reading up, and it's it's crazy because it is like, as Jesse said much earlier, five on five, they're great. Shorthanded, they're great. Penalty, or sorry, power play, they should be amazing, and they're terrible, and it's weird. Um, Someone tweeted me yesterday. They're like, thank you for resurrecting Jeff Carter's season. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I mean, listen, uh, best of luck to them. Uh, I was not a fan. <laughs> wow. I'm still not a fan. Good I, luck I, in your future endeavors. Yeah. Best of luck. And I, I think that they could use a coaching change, but they've already extended that guy. Mike Sullivan. Yeah. For like three more years after this one. And they did that last year. And I, there's some rumors about him being super hooked into Fenway sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like Dubas is kind of stuck with him, And I don't know, to me, to me, that's a team that, that, you probably need a new head coach. I, I, yeah, but I mean, they'll probably make the playoffs. And then what, if they're in the playoffs, then I, I'm not a Penguins hater anymore. Cause it's Crosby and Malkin in the playoffs. It, I just not, I just don't think this is a great regular season team so far. They're such uh they're one of the most, they're one of the least explainable teams in the league. Mm. Well, how do you have a power play? That's that bad. What? Well, how and, is that possible? But, okay. You have one of the better goalies in the league who I wasn't bullish on heading into the season. Um, you're a pretty good five on five team. Even if your power play stinks, you should be able to coast like to you. They should be in a playoff spot, especially in the Metro division. Yeah, man. They should be in a playoff spot. A and lot the way, of the teams we thought were going to be good. Haven't been. What did this, when did this person say resurrect Jeff Carter's career? Cause he had an assist a night ago and he hadn't had any points in his last five leading up to that. He's got eight points this year. Yeah. I, uh, who is this person? It doesn't mean they were right. I just thought it was <laughs> They're not. Funny. They're objectively not right. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Listen, one point. I mean, this yeah. is that's a start, Adam. It is. Every house starts with the first brick. You You're know right. what I mean? I do. You know I what do. I mean? Jesse, what do you got there? Yeah, if you look at where the Pittsburgh Penguins land on uh, goals against, it is second in the entire National Hockey League uh, after the Winnipeg Jets, who are the best. Uh, goals against that's amazing right now how are you but in the on goals four they sit um let me just make sure i have the number i think it's 20th goals four per game so and that's a lot because they have the 30th ranked power play in the entire league at yeah, 20th in goals four per game and then on the power play percentage they are 30th so if you just account for, hey, score a couple more power play goals, boost that goals for per game, your defense is there, Jari's paying great, you're not allowing a lot of goals, you can probably get back into this thing. And they're a lot closer than we think to a playoff spot because the Philadelphia Flyers are reeling right now. I believe they're on a five or six game losing streak come, uh, before yeah. the All-Star break. So there's an opportunity to get that third spot in the Metro for the Penguins if they can squeak in there. I think mm -hmm. it'll probably end up going to the Islanders. But yeah, the, it's, yeah, it's between the Penguins and the Islanders, pretty much. Uh, the Devils... What's the, going on there? Uh, injuries have kind of killed them. Jack Hughes was scoring three points a game, and now he's not in the lineup. That's yeah. that's kind of a big swing. You know? Yeah. yeah. Next question. I can, I can. I'm happy for Tristan Jari, by the way. Uh, Ryan Graves is still one of the worst signings from July 1st last year. Maybe he'll fit in next year. Uh, this is from Zach Thomas. Does anyone know what hot chocolate would translate to on a Swedish menu? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Um, I think it's uh, warm chocolate. No way. That's so close to English. Yeah. And also, I'm pretty sure that's wrong, but whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Shut up. Is it wrong, too? Oh, you know what? We I'm going to write a story. I'm going to write a book called Vorm Zoo Stories. <laughs> and it's just going to be about stories play, at the zoo where I was Vorm. I'm going to do Google Translate and we'll play. I was just going to do it. What the guy says. Uh, hold on. No, no, you're right, Steve. Am I? Yeah. Let's go Vorm Chocolade. Okay. Here you can, right. I want to oh. hear him say it. Yeah. 
Everybody ready? Steve, what is hot chocolate in Swedish? Warm chocolate. Warm chocolate. Ooh. Oh, no, you're saying it wrong. So you were wrong. Say it again. Warm chocolate. Warm chocolate. No, do that again. Warm chocolate. Chocolate? Warm chocolate. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Warm chocolate? chocolate? Warm chocolate. <laughs> Warm chocolate. Steve, I feel like your brain's been broken. <laughs> I feel like... Are you... What the fuck? <laughs> what? Do you think you're right? No, I, I think that's wrong. Are you questioning Google Translate? Warm chocolate. Okay, yeah, well. I think everyone should. If there's any Swedish listeners listening. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, to you, Jesse? No, I think we're good there. Warm right. chocolate. That's right. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Warm chocolade. Chocolade. <laughs> you take your chocolade. I think we you should. You go home. Do you want to say something else? I think we should fook off with this segment. <laughs> you want to say something else? Um, I used to work at the zoo, um, and it was a lot of fun. Oh, I, sorry. I thought you wanted me to wrap the show. No, I was. I, now we're going to do it. Here we go. This is, I used to work at the zoo, and it was a lot of fun. Jag brukade jobba på djurparken, och det var väldigt roligt. Mm. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. Yag. <laughs> Brukad Yobapa. Oh my God. You're parking. Och, I need to put my glasses on. Var vlogging. Och, det var valdik rolig. Jag brukade jobba på djurparken och det var väldigt roligt. That's what I said. <laughs> Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.